Excuse me, Mr. Davis. We've heard fine reports about this school and about the good things that you and your students have been doing. Can you tell us something about how and why you came to use your present method of teaching? On in the U.S. Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History. You landed here on um, Election for Dummy Series 1984. Uh, what we're going to do for you guys out there in TV land and girls is we're going to chop up that election and serve it to you on a hot, steaming platter of learning. Oh my. Um, this is perfect if you're maybe an AP government student, you're in a poli-sci class and you don't know what the hell is going on, or you're just pressing buttons randomly online and you land it here. Either way, here we go. Um, first, we have the incumbent Ronald Reagan, um, governor of California. We've done this before. He was an actor, kind of union, then communist hunter. Um, and he's been president for four years. Um, and he is going to be running against Walter Mondale from the state of Minnesota, kind of the, I guess, the party nominee, kind of, you know, what they, they served up. Um, so what we would like to do is just really get the big kind of free response uh, concepts out there. So we're not going to do a lot of details. We're just going to stick to the, to the Jimmy here. What the hell does that mean? Nevertheless, here we go. First, it is a blowout. And when I say blowout, I mean like blow out. Like, take 1972 and then blow it up, right? In 1972, we saw Richard Nixon smack down George McGovern, and here we have Ronald Reagan. Watch this. Sweet! Like, literally, like, except for Minnesota and I think D.C., this is like a 525 to 13 blowout. So it is definitely one of those elections, and uh, I would say popular vote-wise, we're looking at, like, um, I think it was like 58% to 40. I mean, it's it really is that type of election. So first, what we would like to do is just really quickly, like, well, who is Walter Mondale? How did he get the nominee? Well, there was actually some kind of, you know, important things going on in the primary. When you're um, kind of in, you know, election mode to nominate somebody against an incumbent, you're kind of defining your party, right? We, we, we've seen this in other elections where, you know, in 64, the party, Republican Party, gets redefined by... Barry Goldwater, and then, you know, in um, 72, McGovern kind of tries to redefine the Democrats as liberals. Later on, we'll see Bill Clinton do it for the Democrats in 1992. Um, but Walter Mondale was really kind of, you know, Jimmy Carter's former vice president, so he is the insider. He is kind of the typical Democrat, New Deal, liberal, um, you know, great society kind of, stay the course kind of guy. Um, and he's going to run a very much kind of like a... Uh, Reagan is a negative kind of guy uh, campaign, uh, maybe rather than what he should have done is more of a positive where he would take the country kind of campaign. But his challengers were, A, uh, two interesting guys, Gary Hart, um, who we're going to see come back in 1988 and really kind of uh, introduce us to the sex scandal business. How, how fun is that going to be? Uh, but he was really kind of like the new Democrat in the race. Uh, Hart is kind of like Clinton before there's a Clinton you know, kind of folksy and, you know, we don't want to stick with these policies that have failed in the past, not Republican or those maybe former uh, Democratic uh, programs, but rather to find a new way. So he runs kind of a moderate Democrat. And then you have Jesse Jackson of the Rainbow Coalition. And Jesse Jackson, of course, African-American, um, I think Shirley Chisholm ran before, but on a major ticket, he is the first one seriously contending um, to be uh, the nominee for the Democrats back in 1984. Um, he kind of blew himself up. He used uh, Heine, um, kind of called New York Heine Town. Probably not a good idea in the Rainbow Coalition to call out of color. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, at the end of the day, uh, Mondale is going to take that. And Reagan has no competition. He's the incumbent presidency uh, president, so it's going to be those two guys. Um, in terms of kind of how, how the race goes, uh, number one, I think it's important that we understand uh, who the vice presidential nominee was for Walter Mondale. And... Uh, he knew he had to do kind of like a Palin, kind of like, you know, McCain had to pick someone outside of the box. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a woman. It could be another ethnic group or somebody who's really maybe radical on the political spectrum. So, for instance, if you saw Romney pick, you know, even Ron Paul, that would be out of the box for the Republican Party. But he picks Geraldine Ferraro. Um, who's kind of Mario Cuomo, who really, uh, uh, Italian-American, who didn't um, want to be vice president at that point, recommended her to uh, Mondale, and she became the nominee. And the idea was, I think, that, 
you know, that would kind of galvanize the woman vote. That with them bringing up the ERA again, the Equal Rights Amendment, um, they thought that the woman vote would swing to Mondale's way, and it didn't. Actually, Reagan won like 55% of, uh, of the female vote back then. Um, so other stuff that's really important, well, Ferrara dragged him down, too. We should mention that. Uh, uh, her husband kind of had some ties maybe to, I don't want to say like mob pornography stuff, but I think that's what was going on back there. Um, and uh, there were some other issues. We have to bring up everything out of the rug there. But Geraldine Ferraro is definitely um, something to be said of in, in, in that campaign. Um, and then the other thing was really, before we start talking about how Reagan ran his campaign, where uh, Mondale directed his focus. And I think this was probably his biggest mistake. He, he talked about taxes all the time. And if you're going to talk about taxes, um, no matter what your strategy is or your logic or your reason for why you think taxes should be raised, uh, it's just it's always going to fall on deaf ears. It's always going to be played to be like, oh, there you go again. You want to raise taxes. And, uh, you know, his line, which is going to turn out to be true, was that he was willing to say we needed to raise taxes in order to fill, you know, our hole in the deficit and, uh, and, do, and some other reasons why we had to raise taxes, uh, where Reagan was going to do it, but he wouldn't say he was going to do it. And Reagan did eventually have to raise taxes in order to balance his budget, or at least to in order to reduce the deficit or the um, debt of his, of his budgets. Because remember, Reagan, you know, sought in a supply side, trickle down economic kind of way, to raise uh, to lower taxes on the, the top percentages, one, two percent of, of, of Americans, with the idea that would trickle down to the poor. Um, and in order to, when you do that, if it trickles down, that's great, because then it expands the, you know, the, the workforce and you get more revenue and it all works out. But until that happens, that means that you have less money coming into the government. So then you have to cut it somewhere or you have to borrow money to pay for your programs. And that's what Reagan did. Reagan actually, you know, um, increased defense spending at the same time of decreasing revenue coming in. So therefore, you don't have to be like a wizard in economics to figure out you have to borrow the money. But I went off on a sidetrack there. Um, the other thing, uh, so I think that Mondale talking about taxes, like that was ugly. I talked like a minute and I want to like shoot myself. So don't talk about taxes when you run for, for office. Um, and then the other big thing is the nuclear freeze, kind of talking a lot about de-escalation in the Cold War. And even though in the Cold War really went through a detente phase with Nixon, it's really kind of on the upswing in 84 before it's going to get really cool later on with Gorbachev, um, you know, coming to meet Reagan and all that kind of stuff. But in 84, it was still very scary. And by talking about... Um, you know, kind of a nuclear freeze, Reagan was able to really kind of capitalize on that. And I'll just go over Reagan's kind of two big campaign ads, and uh, we'll, we'll call it a day. Because this isn't really about examining policies. That's maybe, you know, Reagan in 10 minutes, or which is online. But um, we're just talking about how the campaign worked. And Reagan, whoever his campaign advisors were, like, you know, they were the best ever because he was really good at marketing. Um, and what he did very effectively was, one, good uh, morning in America, this idea of, just think of, like, pretty music, like a Hallmark commercial. It's like a Hallmark commercial, where you, like, you watch it and you cry because you love America. So it's very patriotic, very nationalistic, very much like we're coming out from a, where we were in a slump and Reagan's waking America up in a good way and with a city on the hill and love and, you know, bunny rabbits and cotton candy. Uh, and the other one was called The Bear in the Woods. And that was more the scary kind of one that was like the Soviet Union's lurking out there. And you don't want to turn the reins of power over to this guy, Walter Mondale, who, who isn't the Cold War warrior that Reagan is. So, you know, really in a nutshell, those are kind of the biggest, biggest things. Um, the debates, actually, Reagan didn't do really well in them. And um, I don't want to get, this isn't political, but he did suffer from Alzheimer's and I think maybe the effects were even kicking in back in 84, and um, he, he would forget things, and he would say he would forget things, and uh, uh, he forgot where he was in one debate, and um, I, I think that he was just really good at recovery, <laughs> and I think the line, I'm trying to think of the line that he said is, they were like, like Mondale was trying to bring it up in a good way about age, and I think Reagan replied with, I'm going to get the quote wrong, with something like, uh, you know, I'm not going to hold age against you, you know, for your youth and inexperience. And everyone's like, ah, ha, 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 ha. And I think I read somewhere where Mondale, like, right at that moment was like, I lost. And it is a sweep. So 1984, right? Just get the, 
He say 84, I think, Orwell. 1984, it's a landmark election in terms of sweepingness. Reagan's going to get reelected, and uh, he's going to raise taxes anyway. So, bum -da -dum bum bum There was also a libertarian, uh, like David Berglund or something like that, but all the Ron Paul people out there always want to hear libertarian. So there I said it, libertarian! We'll see you in 1988 when we go back to the future. Now I'm thinking of that white fox guy. A last question, Mr. Davis. Can other subjects be taught this way? They certainly can, and many are. Actually, I haven't been talking just about American history. I've described a democratic method of teaching, which can be used to varying degrees by any teacher, on any grade level, in any subject.